Now let's focus on Einstein's principle of relativity. If light is a wave, what is the medium in which it travels? Well, the medium in which it was thought to travel was called ether. Experiments measuring the speed of light were thought to be measuring the speed of light through ether. Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism predicted that light waves travel with the speed, so he predicted that the speed of light would be 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. This prediction seemed only valid in the reference frame of the ether. All right, prior to Einstein, it was thought that light travels at speed C in the reference frame S of the ether. Then surely light travels at some other speed relative to a reference frame S prime moving through the ether. It seems as if the speed of light should differ from C, 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, in a reference frame moving through the ether. Well, after many years of thinking about the connection between electromagnetic waves and reference frames, Einstein concluded that all the laws of physics, not just Newton's laws of mechanics, hold in any inertial reference frame. So his principle of relativity, all the laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. According to the principle of relativity, Maxwell's equations of electromagnetism must be true in every inertial reference frame. So what does this mean? Now, the constancy of the speed of light. Maxwell's equations predict that electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Therefore, light travels at this speed in all inertial reference frames. This implies that all experimenters, regardless of how they move with respect to each other, find that all light waves, regardless of their source, travel in their reference frame with the same speed, the speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So here we have a picture. You have Amy, this light wave leaves Amy at the speed C relative to Amy. It approaches Kathy, even though Kathy's moving at speed C relative to Kathy. Then you have Bill. This light wave leaves Bill at speed C relative to Bill, but guess what? It approaches Kathy at speed C relative to Kathy. Light travels at speed C in all inertial reference frames regardless of how the reference frames are moving with respect to the light source. So in every experiment, we have found that light travels at the speed 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, regardless of how the reference frames are moving. All right, so here a photon is emitted at speed C relative to the pi meson. Measurements find that the photon's speed in the laboratory reference frame is also C. So experiments find that the photon travels through the laboratory with speed C, not the speed that would be predicted, 1.99975C, that you might expect, okay? So it doesn't matter what reference frame. The speed of light is constant. Well, that leads us to a little problem. All right, suppose reference frame S prime is moving relative to reference frame uh, reference frame S prime. So here you see it's kind of moving, but then you have Laura and Laura's stationary. So what's happening here is in this particular moving reference frame S prime, all right, in you have light ray passes Dan. So the light ray passes Dan, okay? Then the light ray passes Eric. Well, between Dan and Eric, in this moving reference frame, it looks like the distance traveled by the light ray in this moving frame is delta X prime. Well, but this frame is moving relative to Laura. So what's happening here, the distance traveled by the light ray in the stationary frame seems to be this distance. So we'll just call it delta X. So as the ray of light moves from Dan to Eric, they measure it having traveled a distance of delta X prime. 
Laura will measure a longer distance, delta x, simply because Eric is moving to the right. So as seen by Laura, the ray has to travel farther to reach him. The definition of velocity we know is displacement over time, so delta x over delta t. In order for the speed of light to be measured as c in both frames, the time delta t as measured by Laura cannot be the same amount of time as measured by Dan and Eric in delta t prime. This means that our assumptions for the nature of time must be reevaluated. So what we're going to get into is we're going to get into time dilation, and we'll talk about that in class.